Hello everybody and welcome to another training brought to you by webiceberg.net In this video tutorial we're going to be looking at HTML5 and uh, this is the first video of a series of tutorials that I'm going to make regarding HTML5 and they're going to be step-by-step -step tutorials to teach you guys how to develop in HTML5 This first video tutorial is going to be, uh, this first video actually is going to be a basic introduction we're going to discuss things such as why do you need HTML5 we're going to be looking at the current support of HTML5 and we're going to be looking at basic improvements in HTML5 over HTML4 and finally uh, I will also show you some real world examples of HTML5 so that you can get a clear idea of what you can do and what HTML5 is not just before we get into the detail and before we start looking at real world examples let's take a moment and understand why do we need HTML5 to understand why we need HTML5 we have to understand what HTML5 really is and what it is not so basically HTML5 is nothing new it's just basically an extension of HTML4 it's uh, HTML4 taken and expanded to make HTML5 so this means that HTML5 is backwards compatible. Uh, one of the main advantages of HTML5 is, oh, oops, is simple error handling and parsing rules. What this means is that uh, from now on, the browser will not be in charge of determining how things work. So the in the end, in the end, the developer will not have to worry of developing for different kinds of devices or different kinds of browsers, such as Chrome, Internet Explorer, Firefox, or iPhone and Mac and PC and your desktop. All of these devices and browsers will read the HTML5 page the same way, and they will show it on the screen in the same way. This is one of the major improvements that, in my opinion, from HTML5, apart from all the developing elements. Now, if we just take HTML5 and we see what it is basically made out of, we can see that it's made out of HTML4, CSS3, and JavaScript basically. So, HTML5 is going to allow you to code in JavaScript and obviously in CSS3. So, let's not let's not get too far ahead of ourselves and uh, get lost with all these new concepts and new features we have to understand that HTML5 is a continuation of HTML4 and we have to also understand that there is severe limitations on browsers now just for your information I have came up with a list of useful example pages of HTML5 that show you truly the full potential of this new technology of this extension of HTML4 for example, a very good example is this web page right here. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look now that my internet is fixed at this example. This is a page made in HTML5 and uh, for example here we see the cannabis feature in use. You can see that as I hover my mouse over the birds, the birds just scatter away from the flock. So basically what this site does is you type in your address, for example, Bergamo. Italy and you hit enter after that you wait for the page to load and you launch an interactive video that uh, basically takes many features of HTML5 and CSS3 and combines them into this beautiful presentation that you can see I'm not gonna go into it if you want the link is here and you can go visit it uh, keep in mind that this website only works with Google Explorer so if you try it on uh, Firefox, Internet Explorer, or any other website, you might be experiencing issues. So there's another list of examples here for you, from which you can choose from. Also, keep in mind that also YouTube, the new YouTube video player, has been made entirely in HTML5. Now, some useful resources that you might be interested in. To start developing HTML5 is the HTML5 validator by W3Schools. 
this will check the syntax of your web page and tell you and tell you the mistakes that you made. But I actually want to take a look with you guys on this website. So to answer the question should you use HTML5 or should you wait for the browsers to become more compatible? Now obviously this depends on you but the question is how many of your users are going to be using Internet Explorer, how many are going to be using Chrome and how many I keep on having internet issues today. So let's take a look at the resources that I've given available for you. The first one is the W3C school validator. This will check the syntax of your code and determine if you have any mistakes in your code. Uh, this is a very useful tutorial. I recommend you should go and see on basically on the base, basic building blocks of making HTML5 websites. Uh, this is one of my favorites actually. This is a presentation made entirely in HTML5 and it basically shows some of the main features that HTML5 is going to allow developers to implement. This link will uh, test your browser's HTML5 compatibility and give you a score rating. Now if you are undecided whether you should use HTML5 already in your beginning projects, then you should go to this link and you should see how many, what are the basic trends in browser consumption and browser usage. And finally, this is my favorite side of all. This is basically the Internet 6 countdown to its death, which basically means how many computers in the world are left using Internet Explorer 6 and uh, where these computers are located. If you actually go to this website, you will see that most of these computers are located in China and India and that they are decreasing at an ever, ever counting rate. So don't trust Internet Explorer, that much. don't rely on Internet Explorer 6 so much when you are developing. Let me just show you what I mean. And here we go. Surprisingly there are some people in Norway and Finland still using Internet Explorer. And as we can see, the largest percentage of usage for Internet Explorer is in the People's Republic of China followed closely by India well, followed closely by South Korea actually with a staggering 8.9% but basically this indicates to us that Internet Explorer 6 has its dates numbered and that we should be looking at developing with new technologies so thank you very much guys for, look, for paying attention to me and learning about the basic of HTML5 whether you should use it and uh, what might be currently some of the things that might limit you from developing in HTML5. In the next video tutorial I'm gonna start about start talking about HTML5. I'm gonna show you the basic syntax of HTML5 page and we'll dive into more detail about HTML5. Thank you very much and I hope to see you in another video.